We question Ollie's not up to it. Look at his CV. But yeah, for some reason, other managers go to clubs and they're given the benefit of the doubt. I watched Chelsea last night. Chelsea, decent team. They couldn't get the job done. Frank Lampard's lost eight games. But for some reason, hey, Frank's doing all right. Frank, maybe because he's English. I don't know. <laughs> well, he's a well, head of the Frank's, right. Frank's, Frank's track record, CV, went to Derby, didn't get promoted. But Frank's, Frank's got all the answers for Chelsea. Frank Lampard has been sacked by Chelsea. It's the Chelsea way. They've sacked their most successful manager ever. They've now sacked their most successful player ever. Chelsea will spend big, sack managers, bring in a new manager, spend big and repeat the cycle. It's the Chelsea way. But it's not the Man United way. And I certainly don't think it's the way with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And there's a video that I want to do now. And there's something I want to get off my chest because I think something has to be said about the progress that Solskjaer has made because of where we were last season and where Chelsea were and Lampard were last season compared to where we are now. Before I do begin, I want to make sure I encourage all of you to join our Discord server. There's a link in the description. There's thousands of us on there already. There's daily chat on there. I'm on there plenty as well. You can ask me questions. Going to be doing voice chat soon. So make sure you head over to the Discord. There is a link in the description and it's free. And make sure you send in your questions every day to me on Twitter at United People's TV using the hashtag fan line. Hashtag any questions, gripes, anything you want to say about United, send them to me on there. But let's talk about Lampard and Solskjaer. And the first thing we need to do is rewind to last season and the Premier League table on the last day of the season. United and Chelsea, we finished level on 66 points. And it was a, a very big achievement for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That game against Leicester in the last day, we did it. We got that top four. Ultimately, it didn't prove very fruitful given what happened in the Champions League this year. But we did and we succeeded last year. And then from that point on, there were two very different summers at Chelsea and Manchester United. At Chelsea, they signed big. Kai Havertz, Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, they got Silveron, they got Ben Chilwell, they got Saar, they got Mendy. They spent over £200 million. Lampard was back to the hilt. It's the Chelsea way. Bring in players, bring in lots of players, spend a lot of money immediately and expect results immediately. On the other hand, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer went into that summer and he knew, just as much as the fans did, what we needed in that summer window. We needed Jadon Sancho. We needed a new centre-back and we needed a new, I would say, defensive midfielder. We didn't get a new centre-back. I'm not even sure we were after one. We didn't get a central midfielder. And we spent the entire summer going after Jadon Sancho. And we didn't sign him. Yes, we signed Donny van der Beek. I wouldn't class him as a central midfielder, more of as, as a number 10. But it was in a position where we didn't really need to strengthen, but a, a position where I saw it more as an opportunistic signing for the price rather than what we needed. And in St Cavani, we certainly needed a striker, but that was a... A deadline, really like a late signing of a player who was a, a free agent. So that was a, a bit of a panic. It's worked out for United, but it was a bit of a panic. And then Alex Tellez was probably the only signing I would say that you look at what United needed. Like, and I would say, yes, we would have needed a fullback. And look what it's done for Luke Shaw. But given the comparisons of what Solskjaer was backed with and what Lampard was backed with, they're incomparable. Yet right now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United sit top of the Premier League, 11 points ahead of Chelsea, with a game in hand, I think. And Lampard has been sacked. And something I want you all to bear in mind as well about the summer is the fact that, look at what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did. The Glazers own them as well. They signed Brady. They signed Gronkowski in the NFL. And the Buccaneers are in their first Super Bowl for 16 years. So the Glazers had money to spend this summer. They just chose to spend it elsewhere. And I'm going to get into a video on that later this month. But Solskjaer, to do what he has done, given the result... Look, some of you are going to be like, oh, you spent X amount on Maguire, you spent X amount on Wan-Bissaka. Yes, there are certain positions where we have strengthened and we have spent, but compared to our rivals in the summer, we did not invest anywhere near enough. Yet we're top of the league. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, for me, has, is, is overachieving right now with what, what all of our expectations were going into the season. And against adversity, against the expectations, against the tide, really, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has proven himself to be more than just this PE teacher label. If there's a PE teacher, it's Frank Lampard, man. He's a manager who was just as inexperienced as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was coming into the job. But as Roy, as I pointed out at the start of the video there, you saw that. Roy Keane really pointing out that why, why is Lampard getting a different sort of treatment to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? And I think the same thing maybe exists in Arteta. And, I, and it's something that I'll always revert back to. It's just that as United fans, we have to expect a different level of criticism and scrutiny 
than all the teams around us because we have won the Premier League 13 times and therefore people are going to pick more holes in any problems than we have compared to anybody else and that's something you have to just accept as a United fan but it doesn't make it any less frustrating when you see it so blatantly and we've seen it with Solskjaer and Lampard and for me the fact that Lampard's been sacked and Solskjaer's sitting at the top of the Premier League six points ahead of Liverpool and we've just knocked them out of the FA Cup the progress has been fantastic and I've done a I've done a video sort of exposing my own um uh, my, my own bad opinions, maybe you can call it that if you want, but just ha how my, my tone and opinion has changed when I go to Solskjaer, because I really wavered last January when it really, after the Burnley game, that was the low point for me, and I, I couldn't really see a way out of it, and obviously Bruno Fernandes's arrival transformed my opinion, transformed Manchester United, and transformed everything that's happening under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and I'll be honest, I didn't predict that, none of us could have predicted it, but it's happened, and we're enjoying it right now. And just to see Lampard sacked at the same time as Solskjaer is on this upward trajectory, it really goes to show the amount of progress that Solskjaer has made. And I'm also going to do a separate, another, oh, I've got loads of videos planned for you guys. Another video that I'm going to do, I'm going to be looking at the stages of Solskjaer's management. Right from the start when we were talking about DNA and culture and looking at how that rhetoric has changed to where we are now and the stages that we still have in front of us. But you can see this, this plan that Solskjaer has had. He has been given the time by United. Even when it all seemed lost, and it, I think it's on two different occasions, and certainly that Burnley one, and then back in um, in this January as well, it, it just, was it December? I don't know, but the, there's been a couple of times where I've really, really wobbled about Solskjaer, and I've been proven incorrect in those wobbles. I think those wobbles were still fair, but I'm happy that this situation has happened. I'm happy that it's it's Chelsea who are sacking their manager and it's not United because I don't like the constant change. And I think it's a real sign of the progress that Sol Solskjaer is, is not only um, growing into the job, but it, look, Frank Lampard was taught in the school of Jose Mourinho. That's why he started throwing players under the bus. That's why he started publicly criticising players and, and it didn't work because if you do that and you don't get a response, you're doomed. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer... He's cut from the cloth of Sir Alex Ferguson. And you see so many traits between the two. And for a lot of it, a lot of the early stages, everybody thought it was just a cliche. That Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was a cliche just basically reading the book and reading what people want to hear. But he's backed it up with, with growth, uh, individual growth, individual man management. Just loads of different elements that are all coming together like a lovely puzzle. And the jigsaw is starting to be completed. Whereas at Chelsea, they've now got all these... Ex this, 18 carat gold jigsaw in front of them, just all over the shop. I'll just bring Tuchel in and see what happens there. Don't care what Chelsea do. But for me, it's just the biggest sign of progress because where we were last season, we finished the same level, it's level on points with Chelsea. And Lampard was given all the money in the world this summer. And he's been sacked now in January. Solskjaer wasn't backed. He didn't get Sancho. He didn't get the centre back. He didn't get the central midfielder. Yet, we're top of the league. And sure, Liverpool falling off and City falling off, that's helped. But as with Leicester winning the league, a perfect storm happens. And sometimes there's someone there steering the ship in the right direction that can take advantage of that extra win. And that is what United are doing at the moment. And it's brilliant to see. And what I asked out on Twitter before I did this video, I asked for your opinions on Solskjaer and Lampard and everything to do with it. So this is what you sent in. So I'm going to read them out. I've got one here from Humayun saying, is it a big club mentality to sack managers if not performing, if they've only been there for one season or giving managers time is the way forward shown at United? Now, it, it's not just a blanket case of uh, give, a, give a manager time because patience is only there when progress can be seen. You can be patient, but if you're patient with the wrong manager, you're wasting your damn time. United, we've tried with Moyes, eight months, didn't work. Tried it with Van Howe, a couple of seasons, very experienced, didn't work. Tried it with Mourinho, got in bed with the devil. It worked for a little bit, but it blew up in our face and we knew that was going to happen. And then with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we have to take a different approach and it's a different approach which is working. And I'm all for it. So it's not just a case of always giving a manager time and having patience, but when that manager deserves it and you can see the progress, that's when it's deserved. Another question here from NJW saying, he's achieved nothing yet. I'm loving the form that United are in, but we're out of the Champions League and there's a long way to go in the league yet. Now you're absolutely spot on there, mate. It's not a case of saying that Solskjaer is the best manager in the entire world, but I think it's fair 
absolutely fair to start really talking about his progress and you can only really talk about progress in context and in context of this we finished level on points with Lampard last season and his Chelsea team he spent 200 mil we didn't yet we're top and he's been sacked that is progress and the final one here sent in by OMK saying the rebuild was something that was never going to happen overnight Oli recognised what was necessary in the first window and bought players accordingly he needed back in this window but was never given it but he still managed to take United to a place we'd only dreamed of He's made and he's improved so many players, turned them into mainstays of our team. Fred, Matic, McTominay, Shaw, Martial brought in players with winning mentality who would give their lives for the badge. Now, Bruno Fernandes is the best example of that. But exactly what you're talking about there, mate, is exactly what I'm going to do a video on because I think the, the stages of the progress have been slow at points, slower than a lot of us would have wanted. But at United, we do have patience as a club. That's why so many academy players come through our ranks and Mason Greenwood there scoring against Liverpool, assisted by Marcus Rashford. And they flip. there's so many players that come through our academy because we have the, the, that it's the element of the club that has patience in players. In Look, Ranimal Falcao is another example. He was, he was quite crap at United, but he was given a stand innovation in his last game and United fans never booed him, never, never jeered him, never, never got against him. And it... it I, for me, it, it's something I'm, I love about the club. Now, Jose Mourinho, did he get enough time? You can argue differently, but I don't. I think he was sacked at the right time, and I think he had enough time. It was that third season syndrome where you were a little bit worried, uh, and obviously it proved correct. Van Hal, I think he was treated poorly in how he was sacked, but again, it was the right decision to sack him, and Moyes should never have been hired in the first place. Now, Solskjaer is, is a manager who we're giving time to, and we're seeing the fruits of that now. Because it's a process. Everything's a process. And football is cyclical. As United fans, we're a bit... We're on edge because we haven't won the league in seven years. But hell, Liverpool didn't win it for 30 years. And there's teams in the Premier League that have never won it. We've been spoiled by our own successes. And that makes some people impatient. But it's been a topsy-turvy seven years. And just to say, I'm, just, I'm sorry, but I'm enjoying the fact that, Liv that Chelsea's business model does not work. Because I hate it. Spending 200 million, not working, sacking, bringing another one. It, it, given how many trophies they've won in the last like, 10 years, it's a business model that works for them, but it's not sustainable. And I don't want to see it ever come to United, really. We tried it with Mourinho. We, as I said, we got in bed with the devil, but that's when United were really trying to rebuild. And But Solskjaer's come in and he's just setting and has been setting the foundations ever since he's come in. And now we're starting to see the fruits of that labour. I'm starting to go on a bit here, but I'm just, I'm not that I'm enjoying Lampard being sacked, but. I'm just enjoying the fact that at the same time where they spent all that money, he still got sacked. He wasn't the right manager and that hasn't worked out for them. And United sticking behind Solskjaer, it's working out for us. And it's just nice to be on the right path for once because after a few years of U-turns and run managers and everything that we've done, I'm enjoying this feeling again. My opinion. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments below. But for me, Lampard being sacked is, is a real indicator of the progress that Solskjaer has made and the credit that he deserves to get, which I still do not think he gets enough of. But you might disagree. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Unlucky. Unlucky, Frank. Although I will, I will miss beating Chelsea every single week. That's, just, that's a shame, isn't it? <laughs>